Hello and welcome back. It's been a while and I apologize that I've been away for a bit. As you can see, I've made some changes to my recording setup. We're doing these videos now in the control room. I have my uh, Neumann microphone and uh, we're recording uh, with the Neumann and uh, I'm still using the Mac camera. Uh, but uh, I do have a camera on its way, a real camera, and hopefully my videos will improve over time. What I'd like to discuss today is what I call the most important finger. Uh, and we're not only discussing the most important finger, but uh, what I consider the most important application of how your fingers will move on a saxophone, based on one finger. That finger is the fourth finger of your right hand. Now, why am I talking about this finger? Because, and I'll demonstrate this on a drumstick, uh, so that the keys of the saxophone don't get in the way. So many players, in fact, I would say probably most players, have a tendency to lift this finger quite high. It's a clumsy finger, so to get it to work right, we gotta really mess with it and, and, and feather it and baby it. Uh, what winds up happening is the other fingers follow suit, and your fingers open up like the petals of a flower. You see that? We just have a tendency to follow this finger. If this finger stays low, you'll see that it's against our natural tendency. It's uncomfortable to lift these any higher. Right now, I'm, I'm lifting them as high as I can before I start feeling an odd feeling in my wrist. So keeping this finger low will keep the other fingers low as well. If you see a Charlie Parker video, you'll see that you can hardly see his fingers moving, not because he's moving so fast, uh, but because he's moving so efficiently. And it's almost like the legs of a tarantula. Uh, also, if we lift this finger really high, we have a tendency then to flap the fingers and to use our, knuckle, our knuckles as the... Um, as the point of motion uh, when we have two other joints in our finger. And we should make use of that. They're there, we should make good use of them. So how do we solve this problem? The first thing we can do is we can practice in front of a mirror and just look at the fingers move. The other thing you can do is just hold the instrument in your lap and look at the fingers. Just, just mess around and do that. You keep this finger low, the other fingers will stay low with it. Now I had this habit for a long time. The way I remedied the habit, and this was a long time ago, I took my saxophone and on that bottom key, I put a rubber band and I looped it around a few times. And then what I did was I took one of those uh, loops of the rubber band, I'm going to set it up right now, and I stretched it over my finger so that it looked like that. Okay, you see that? Now, Obviously, don't do it so tight that you cut off the circulation and understand that you can't go out on a gig and play like this. It's, it's very clumsy. It's simply a reminder. But if you can keep that finger down, mess around with it, you'll see the other fingers will not go up in the air. So keep that finger low. If it's a real bad habit, use a rubber band. Now, some saxophones on that low D key, uh, on that D key rather, will not allow you to loop a rubber band around it. That's okay. If you can't do that, you can still look at your fingers, you can still practice in front of a mirror, and you can stay efficient. And I'm playing right now, and I'm moving my fingers around, and these are just staying low. It doesn't make sense, physical sense, in my brain to lift these fingers any higher. Mess around with that. It's the most important finger. Look, I'm giving you the finger. It's the most important finger, and it is the most important application of how your fingers are going to move the keys on your saxophone. If you practice with this, you'll become more precise, um, you'll become more fluent, and it's just going to be easier. So try it. Tie your finger down, practice in front of a mirror, the most important finger. Good luck, and thank you for watching.